Johnny Mitchell was on Jesse Waters. A month or two before that, I had seen Franzis. So I was just like, boy. And then Johnny Mitchell, I was like, oh, man, this is ridiculous. They're passing me by. And so then like a, a week later, suddenly I got an email from Jack, uh, I think it's Flanagan or something, He, which is his producer. And he was like, hey, we'd love to have you on the Jesse Waters you know, thing. And I was like, oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> I started thinking I was irrelevant. No. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I was like, yeah, anytime you let me know. And then he disappeared. <laughs> and then he came back like a week later. Hey, let's try and, you know, get something on the books. Okay. Whatever. Anytime, <laughs> you know, it, but let me tell you when you do that anytime, it doesn't happen. It doesn't. It, yeah. It, if you're like, yeah, listen, I'm good on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Now, I gotta before. ask you, I gotta ask you a very serious question. You banged every hot chick on the podcast. That's not true. I know on the podcast planet, meaning <laughs> only Rogan's left for you. I'm being real. Like you, like you peaked. You're the high school oh. fucking high school. <laughs> I oh, thought we were going in a whole different direction yeah. right there. Yeah, I I heard something completely <laughs> no, different. I, I obviously, it was a parable on the. I'll say it on the show on the podcasting front. This is the show. Oh, we're recording. <laughs> yeah. yeah nice, to <laughs> nice to tell me. But anyway, you, he doesn't tell you, he just fucking rolls. He here, just starts. But, but here's my point. You, you only have Rogan left. Like I, I'm, I, I, you're my friend. I love you. Like you're like a high school build, like six pack. You have the hot, like cheerleader. Like there's like, like there's nowhere to go. Like you're hanging out with me and Wade, like just get on Rogan and then just like, like just end it. Like that's it. <laughs> Have you never been contacted by Rogan? I do. I, I'm not going to use a different analogy because I was about to send an ambulance to your house if Jess was anywhere nearby. Um, yeah, she. Yeah, my she. Um, um. Oh, and you know what's even funnier is like she got a job, right? Like, uh, she she's on like these working with on these super yachts and stuff. Oh, yeah. Wow. And there's there's some. Uh, so sometimes they they take people out. So she's out right now on like a big party on like a 120 foot oh. yacht. And, you know, they have to have like a mechanic. And I think actually, I think tonight she's working as a, like a steward, they call him a steward, which is like, like a waitress or something. Right. So she'll do something like, she, I, I don't know, she does different things, right. but so she, tonight she went, so, you know, she's hanging out with a bunch of rich guys <laughs> on a fucking yacht right. in the middle of the ocean. Doesn't even come home till like 12, 1230. I'm, I'm asleep. You know, I, you are doing a podcast. I feel like, I feel like if the roles were reversed, she wouldn't be nearly as cool as I am about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, of course. Oh yeah. No, but so, on your podcasting journey, what do you have left? Tell us. Um, I mean, it would be nice to do Rogan. That would be super cool. Right. But, but the truth is that I already know of, I, I, I know that Lex Friedman mentioned me to him yeah. right um and then i know that i and i i believe a couple other guys have told me that have been that were on my show and then have been on his show yeah. that have reached out to him yeah and he's never shown any interest he's a, you know i heard he's a strange bird where he like he just if he wants to talk to you he'll talk to you right right so so if he like sees the right clip or if he sees the right short or something like kind of activates something for him. I, I got a feeling you will end up on a show. That's literally, you will end up on a show. Well, so one of, the, one of the things that happened was when Rogan discovered Soft White Underbelly. Okay. Right, Mark Leda. Yeah. It, when he talks about Soft White Underbelly, he's like, man, this guy, he interviews everybody, like drug addicts yeah. and, you know, pimps and this. He, he, was, he interviewed this con man. Um, he, and so I was the only con man so on there. Knows, so he, like, he knows you're in it. You're, yeah, but you're in his orbit. You just now need to put it out there into the universe. Yeah. Well, it's been out there. It's just, I've, I, I'm okay with it. Like, if it doesn't, that doesn't happen, then I'm okay with it. Listen, like, you know, think about all the people's shows I've been on. Like, that, it's super cool. Lex like, I'm, I'm appreciative. Lex Freeman is number one outside of Rogue, in my opinion, by far. Let, Honestly, I feel like the soft white underbelly. Oh, no, true. I thought he was look, only because I feel like the the like the the footage that he shot. It was such a good interview. He edited it really well. 
And so, you know, is it like, am I going to get a bunch of people from it or views from it? Or is it going to turn into something like, no, of course it was years ago, yeah. but still, when I look at them, if somebody said, Hey, which one do you want me to watch? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to kill six and a half hours with Lex Friedman. I don't even suggest it. I'm like, here, watch this one. It's an hour. It's doable. Yeah. It's, it's great. The Francis ended up okay. I think it was in the 150th K range. Not bad. Yeah, but but the audio got know, fucked up. I know. You know, so. And then Mark's kind of like that too. Mm. You know, I reached out to Mark about my story and <clears throat> he was just like, I want to say he said something in the law. I don't know if it'll fit in what I'm doing. I'm thinking we interview a lot of the similar stories, but I mean, I can't argue with a man that's got his success. So, you know, right. and he, he did say like, hit me up if you're ever out here. And then when I was out there, I did hit him up because JC uh, was went and done the show. Um, literally he went and done soft white when I went and done, uh, Cinemills TV. Oh, Marco. Good dude. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that's come out yet, but it's, it's soon. He's, he's done a couple shorts from it, but the video is not, uh, not dropped yet, but yeah, he was, he was a cool guy for sure. Actually, and Matt, I got Matt, sometimes I don't mind waiting because the subs go up. Well, I recommended know? that actually when when Matt was going out to see Michael, I was like, I can maybe hook you up with Cinemills, but you'd have a lot of time, Matt. You were like in and out, right? Yeah, yeah, I didn't have time to do that. Uh, um, maybe do Francis again if you felt the audio was off or no. I mean, I you know it's funny too because he actually when he ends it, he ends it with like. You know, uh, uh, you know, this is part one. It's like part one. <laughs> we didn't discuss a part two, like part two, part one. Like, yeah, you know, he's he, obviously, you know, he's, he's, um, I don't know. He doesn't want to do a, like he doesn't do long podcast or anything. So, yeah, and, and I, your story, my story, they're they're hard to condense down into forty five minutes, yeah. right? Like. Especially yours, especially. I mean, you've got years and years worth of stuff you're trying to cram in. Mine to at least lay the groundwork is is hard to do that. I have to skip over a lot of stuff. When I went to New York the other a couple of weeks ago, and I did Andrea's, yeah. you know, at the uh, the studio, um, she said she wanted to kind of keep it around thirty minutes, yeah, and even that was difficult. Tight. I'm like, Andrea's tight, yeah. like in a hard stop. There's no like, hey, yeah, it's yeah, a hard stop, yeah. And it's, you have to cut out a lot, which is, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing because if somebody wants to hear a more detailed story, they may search it in Lando mats or, you know, concrete yeah. or, or whoever. So it's, you know, not the worst thing in the world, but it's just hard to get a good tail in. I need at least an hour. Matt, Matt, let me ask you this of the hundred shows you did. What did you get the most impact from text calls, views, messages, comments, you know, a dead pigeon sent to your house, whatever it was, where did you get the most impact of all your shows? Um, concrete. Really? Danny's show? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Only because it was the, well, I, I think cause it was so fresh and it got like two point, you know, 2 million and change yeah. very quickly. And, and I, I also, and so I just don't think anybody, it, it got that amount very quickly. Yeah. And it may not have just been Danny's because when I did Danny's, then I did, you know, I did multiple. Well, TV, I did Danny's, TV, then I did. We did as well too, no? Right. So then I did his, and then I then I did um, Soft White Underbelly. So it was like all of these were going at the same time. So yeah. And so maybe it may have been a convergence of all of them. I can't say for sure with Danny, but I do know that many, many, many people that reach out to me are like, "Bro, I've been watching you since Concrete." Well, I, I will say when I was on your show, you published. I was like. I got lucky. I was a first or second off of Lex, right? I had people on my comments or DMs or whatever I got. I found you on Cox. I found Cox on Lex. So I'm like right. the grandson of, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get a lot of that too. That they'll say I found you on Matt Cox's podcast. On a different subject. All day today, I've been trying to get guests. This is a, this is a problem. No. Like the four. So here's what I thought. I might get a, I might have a few for you. I don't want to say on camera because I have to get their approval too. But I might have a few lined up here that are pretty, pretty, pretty juicy. That would be good because listen, here's what's happening: the more subscribers I get, gotta feed the, beast. the now, huh? Got to feed the beast. Well, the more, well, yeah. But I'm, I'm doing four. I do four a week, right? Four. So I have to schedule. I do four. I release four videos a week. Holy shit! So he's killing it. I couldn't do that. Uh, I couldn't. So we schedule like six or seven because people just drop out. I just had a guy drop out guy. I talked to him. And here's the thing. 
you know, you email me, you talk to me on the phone twice. We've been texting, we scheduled it. And then all of a sudden it's like, Hey, my lawyer said, it's just not a good time for me to be on a, do it. like, bro, you want, like, if, first of all, if you're going to mention it to your lawyer, mention it to him before you talk to me. Yeah. Like, don't, like, uh, don't have, don't waste my time. And then say, Oh, I better check with my lawyer. Motherfucker. You should have checked with your lawyer before you talk, checked with me. Like you're just like, you know, people don't mind wasting your time. So, so, so now that's open. So it's like, here's what's happening is the more subscribers I get where it used to be, I would reach out to somebody yeah. and this is how I felt like it went. I'd say, Hey, you know, I've got a podcast. I'd love to interview you. Uh, would you like to come out? And they go, um, you know, hold on a second. Let me see the subs. Can we do a remote? <laughs> you know, like they'd be like, can we do a, a zoom? Like, I really, like you, I really don't want to come out. Like I don't see this helping me much. You know what I'm saying? That kind of thing. It's like, fuck. So what's happened now is that now when they look at the subs, they go, I say, Hey, look, if, you know, I, I understand you're in Baltimore. Let's do a, we can do a remote. No, no, no. I want to fly in. And then I say, okay, well, listen, I can't pay for you to yeah. fly in. I can't, you know, I can't do any of that. I, it's like not my business model yeah. <laughs> going broke, trying to get to content. I don't have another job. So so they're, they're like, no, 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 I, I, I'll pay. I'll fly in. I'll get the hotel. Don't worry. I'm, I'm cool. I got a, somebody that lives there. No big deal. And it's like, okay, well, when do you want to do it? Cause I'm trying to fill up the next two weeks. And they're like, uh, how about the end of June? The end of oh, June, bro. I need people now. So you talk to the next time. Oh, okay. So we schedule something. Okay. The 23rd. Okay. And you hang up and you go, fuck, I'm still running out of content call them, talk to the next person. Hey, love your story. Great. Yeah. We talked for 20 minutes. I go, man, this would be great. Um, would you like to do a remote? And and they're like, um, you know what? Uh, I really think I'd rather do it in person. Mm. Okay. When would you like to do that? Uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I can, I'm coming down there at the end of, uh, July. <laughs> Fuck. Do you see what I'm saying? So, it, hold it, on. so Matt, doing. so Matt, am I the only guest that took you out, you and Jess out for dinner? Y yes. But you know who I met with Jess and I drove to Orlando. Kevin. Yeah, I met with Kevin. But that was after, though. Yeah, that was that was yeah that was that was way after. And I was gonna say I have another guest that is coming here, and he wants to take uh, Jess and I out, and he's got a girlfriend in Orlando, and he's gonna we're all gonna meet. So that would be the second where I do the podcast, and then later on that night we're gonna go. Love it, Wade. How do you get your guests? Instagram, baby. That's uh, been my go-to from day one, man. And just I was really surprised at like how many people would actually respond back, you know, especially in the beginning. I don't want to say like superstars, but well-known people yeah. like Tom Sizemore. I got literally through Instagram, Yeah, you know, Lilo yeah. Brancato, all the guys from Sopranos, like Robert Fanara and John Fiore and, yeah. you know, Frank Santarelli, all these guys answered their, their DMS and Instagram. Uh, so we mm. we were supposed to have I, I like to make up a better story I, than that. I, I, had, like, I had a I had a partner at the time, and uh, we were supposed to have Tom Sizemore on through a PR agent, and yeah. last last minute he bailed, and mm, we got that's, stuck, that's crazy. we got stuck interviewing like his co stars, which we really like, didn't have a lot of interest in interviewing. But yeah. he he was difficult to nail down for the second half of the interview. So like we we arranged the time and everything. Um, and I'll just go ahead and say it. I mean, he's, you know, passed away now, but he, he did charge, but I didn't care what he charged. Wasn't too out of the ballpark for me to have him on somebody of his caliber that had done what he did. That would have been like, to me, I'm paying for a, a live autograph session of sorts, you know? So I was fine with it. And we went like an hour or closing in on an hour and I was about to wrap it up. And then he just was like, Hey, you know, I'm real tired. Can we finish this another time? And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's fine. If you're going to keep going, I'm going to keep going. And now that, that reschedule went through about four or five reschedules after that. And I was really worried that he was going to not show up, you know, for the second, but he did, he come back, he done like another two hours and change got into like deep about how he, when he was in the Gotti role of witness to the mob spoke to Gotti on the phone, oh, wow. um, talked uh, what was the chick, uh, Heidi Fleisch, you know, he dated Heidi Fleisch yeah. for a little while. Um, he was dating Juliette Lewis from, uh, natural born killers. And I mean, we just, we had, it was like one of the first podcasts, I think up into that time that I had really had no structure of what I wanted to ask. We just kind of 
rolled with it and it was it was really great i enjoyed it and i don't think i'm the last one he did because i know serious and silliness um had him on because i gave him i communicated with him to to hook up but i was one of the last ones he did before he um he passed away and then the guy that you hooked me up with yeah, I adam i guess around that same time was putting together the documentary saving sizemore yep. and like the movie that he was telling me that he was about to go film he was so excited about it and he was like i really think this is going to kind of help put me back on track that was the movie that i guess adam had had kind of helped him with so it was kind of it was a little surreal talking to Adam because a lot of that same time frame was when they were filming, you know, his documentary. Wow. Yeah, I remember uh, I actually, I think I'm allowed to say this. I saw some of the clips from Saving Sizemore documentary, which is in the can. It's not released yet. And it's pretty profound. Yeah, I interviewed everybody. Kevin, uh, Matt, Kevin knows, uh, knew him uh, really well as well. They, they were in a same movie together, Bad Frank, uh, back back in the day. Yeah, Kevin. Um, I, Kevin knows a lot of people. Yeah, you know, like he's been on a lot of programs. He's been on. Like I didn't realize he was sitting there talking about how he was, you know, on on this, um, you know, these episodes of this program. And you know, I don't know a lot, but I, I recognize the names of yeah. the programs or the whatever the series that he was on. Yeah, it was like I was on this one from the the last four season two to season six to, and then they killed me, and then you know. <laughs> His, oh. his wife was a pretty, uh, pretty big role in City on the Hill. Um, yeah, that was that was I love City on the Hill. That so I actually funny I ran into Kevin. What we talk, talk all the time, but I went to a restaurant with my wife, and we randomly ran into him and his wife at that same restaurant that was like randomly in like Montclair, New Jersey. So when I met Amanda for the first time, I was excited because I was like, I used to love City on the Hill. Yeah, that's a good show. That was uh Tom Fontana does that. He done Oz. Yeah. Yep. Oz, it's okay. Horrible. You didn't like Oz? No, bro. I watched I watched like a couple seasons of it, but I was on the run and I kept thinking, man, this is what it's gonna be. Like. <laughs> oh well, yeah, you you got a different perspective of what it's gonna be, but that show was fucking awesome. Like Where's I love it. Tattooed the you grabbed the lawyer and tattooed his lawyer, and it was like, Oh god, this is horrible. I don't want a tattoo. You know, it's especially yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> no, I've, I've, I've actually been rewatching Oz um, last couple of weeks. Not what what actually uh, what what prompted me to do it was if I don't know if you guys follow Tom Fontana or any of the guy Dean Winters or Lee Turgenson from the show, but they released a short movie or short film, um, and it's basically picking up the lawyer you were talking about, which was Tobias Beecher and Dean Winters who played Ryan O'Reilly and it's like Dean gets out of jail and he calls Tobias who's in a hotel room. He just got out of jail and it's like, they're catching up, you know, over the phone. It's like only like 10 or 15 minutes and all those guys are putting it on their Instagram. So I went and watched it and I'm like, damn, that was such a good show. So I went back and like started watching it again and mm. it's not hard to burn. It's only like eight episodes in a season. So it's not hard to burn through, but all those guys that went on, a lot of those guys that went on to do a lot of big time stuff. You know, Chris Leone or whatever his name is, or all the law and orders. Chuck Zito was in there, right? Chuck Zito was in there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He was there. Um, what the one guy that does the farmers insurance was the was the Nazi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dean Winters, who was Ryan O'Reilly, does the he's the man of mayhem. I mean, you know, I think the guy that played Alvarez, uh, the Mexican gentleman, I can't remember Kirk Acevedo, I think's his name. He's in one of the law and orders. I mean, a lot of people spawn careers off that show um this is a completely like you guys are so the so the mob thing Let, listen you know that's i just re that's I, I, I re i i just finished re-watching all eight seasons of entourage uh doug ellen doug entourage. ellen would be my dream guest who's that he's the uh the, the creator oh okay yeah, i was gonna did say I, what, did, i don't know if i ever told you this matt i uh attended so eight seasons the eighth season they had a finale right they had a you know viewing right. an after party it was in new york i attended that i met mark uh adrian uh uh e what's his name uh, uh Connelly. kevin Connolly, uh chuck zito was there uh uh what's his name uh, hickory dickory doc what's his name um the comedian you know talking hickory no. dickory doc the girl sucked down my 
Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, oh, uh, uh, Andrew Dice Andrew Clay. Clay. Andrew Dice Clay. Yeah. Like literally anybody who was anybody, like back then was like Entourage was it, and we got to, we we went like sit second row. Mark, we we're in for, behind Mark, and then uh, we went to the actual after party. It was insane. Uh, what Jeremy Piven was a jerk, uh, but everybody else is pretty cool for the most part. I could see him being a jerk. He was a jerk. He was a jerk. Which one's that? Uh, Who does he play? The uh, the agent. Um, oh, Ari. Ari, yeah. Ari. But he was in what uh the the goods and also one of like my favorite movies. It was really underrated, but Judgment Night. Yeah, very good. Yes. Remember movie. Judgment Night? No, no. no. Well. Maybe slightly. Dennis Leary kind of played like a gang leader mobler or yeah. something, but like it had uh Emilio Estevez, Cuba Gooding Jr., Stephen Dorff, Jeremy Piven, and they're all like going to watch this fight. Somehow or another they get stuck in traffic, they take a wrong turn, they almost hit a guy. The guy's being chased by Dennis Leary, who's trying to kill him to get his money. Yep. Anyways, they wind up being collateral damage, so obviously they gotta take all them out. And like the whole movie from then on out is basically Dennis Leary and his crew chasing everybody else. And, you know, finally, eventually it was like a big face off at the end. But Piven is uh, one of the key characters in the, the whole thing. It was his RV. Of movies, yeah. yeah, I feel like I've seen this. This was like 20 years ago or something. Oh, yeah, it's right? old. It's an old movie. I mean, it was when Estevez was still kind of a pretty big deal. So mm -hmm. that'll give you a little bit of time stamp on it. But, yeah, it's it's really good. I like Leary in it, too. Leary was good. Um, you, were, you were at Paisan Con? Yeah, Paisan Con? Paisan Con. It was absolutely amazing. You want to laugh. Really? I wanted to go, man. I wanted to go. You want to laugh. All, all these like Paisan guys were there. My kids only cared about, you ever see the sh a movie Terrifier with the crazy clown oh, yeah. that kills everybody? So the yeah, guy, Damien Leon. Yeah, so the guy Gino Trefelli, whatever his name is, he was there and he was the guy that cut off his head in the pizzeria. So not only did they get to meet him, he had a photo of him at the pizzeria as one of the shots. They signed it, and they were over the moon. <laughs> there was a million people there. I, I I got geeked out by meeting Eric Roberts. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I like Eric. Yeah. He's pretty cool. Was uh Gianni Russo was there, wasn't he? Gianni Russo was there. I took a so 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 I'm there, right? And I'm this idiot who's like going around. And I knew the guy who was like coordinating it. I got a, a Jersey magazine. So we're like, we're there as media and we we're covering it. So we're wearing the media hat. And uh, I go up to Johnny and I take a photo with him. Right? No, didn't think nothing of it. Walk around. I later find out you got to pay 50 bucks to take photos with people. I didn't realize that until after. Like, oops. Typically, they don't charge media though, because I've been to those types of things. And mine was more or less with a lot of the wrestlers, like older wrestlers. They would have those same type things those little cons or they would okay, yeah. call it russell cade or something and that's how a lot of those guys make their money now though and, and actors too you know um you have some that has a mix of both like you know what athletes. i'm gonna make a reveal for you you ready i got something i got something at paisan con i'm gonna make an exclusive reveal on the matt cox show hold on give me a second give me a second okay i gotta wait for matt to come he's gonna have zero appreciation for this but i know they will like it. <laughs> All right, hold on. Oh boy, it's still in the plastic or the not, paper. I'm not going to tell you what I paid for. That I will not say. So at Paisan Con. Woo! Tell me this is not amazing. That's pretty dope. Can painted that canvas, one of one. Got at Paisan Con by a very uh, reputable artist. I'd be lying if I tell you if I knew his remembered his name, and uh, that's my that was my gift to myself at Paisan Con. I can only imagine that was probably a pretty penny, but all the three cigars. JG James, oh Matt, God. did you watch Sopranos, Matt? That Matt, I, I've watched probably I watched like half of. Them. I probably should watch the whole thing again. You'd like it, you'd damn, like it. sure should, pal. That's like not even just because I'm into mob shit but that tv show yep. is awesome and it's like to me the mark of a good tv show and i'll even put oz in this category as well so i'm not like showing favoritism to mob shit a good tv show is something that can stand the test of time and you have Correct. a rewatchability factor to it okay Correct. outside Correct. of the sopranos when you rewatch it if you take away like 
the computers that they're on are like gigantic. They're like DLP projection screen TV back yep. in the day. And yep. cell phones are like flip phones. Yep. If you take away the technology of that show that they're using, that show could air today and probably be just as entertaining. And it is still more entertaining than half yeah, the show. It got canceled by the woke on some of the misogynistic and like, Oh, I'm sure it would have. Yeah. Some of that shit probably wouldn't fly today, yeah. but the same thing with Oz. Cause I mean, then you're putting everybody in a prison. So you're, you're introducing prison life and that show could be shown today. True. And I think still be good. It probably wasn't air today, True. but you know, the, the show is still great. That's my mark of like a good TV show is rewatchability. And that can, even if it's comedy, you know, friends has that friends has a rewatchability. Too. Wait, can I ask you a question about sure. Matt? You mind? All right. Oh, no, no. So <laughs> I, I was like, yeah. from, oh, my identity. I come from like the mob genre heritage in terms of my guests, my show, that kind of stuff. Right. right. You are an up and coming guy in the space. I think you're one of the fastest growing shows. Well, thank Matt, you, Matt has such disdain and little interest with anything mob related. It is like, it is like, like you and I, like, 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 like I'm here in terms of interest. Like you're like here, Matt just way down has zero, zero, zero. (laughs) But you want to know he, if you go to some of his videos though, like the one that me and him did when we first talked about the Gene Barello, Joey Merlino B that damn thing done numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Great numbers. Yeah, I think it's got, yeah, it's got like a hundred and yep. what's it, 170, 180. Yeah. It's, it's up there. And the one you did with Gene was good. Um, yeah. Gene's almost at two. It's like one eighty yeah, or something Gene, like that. Gene, that was, you know, I, I have some, I, I have, I like Gene. Uh, he's been a guest. I, you know, I have some reservations about some of the stuff that he does. I'll keep that to myself for now, but he does bring numbers, but here's the thing. It brings numbers and Matt still has nil zero interest. L- listen, he, he so texts me today. Oh, go listen, ahead. Jeans is at 193,000 views. Damn. That's pretty good. Um, the one we did, Wade, is at 187,000. Mine's at like views. 21. Oops. <laughs> but here's where Matt, here's where Matt and I fucked up, to be honest. I do know a lot about the subject. He has no interest. I watched it. 75% had nothing to do with the mob. Nothing. We right. talked about our shows, Burns, fucking. <laughs> I was I, when you came. I told you. I said you, you understand. I don't really know anything about it. Like, yeah, I don't but know. I should have, as a good guest and being a podcaster, could have angled it where I could have illuminated. He, he could have took. You could have took more like the approach right. Nadu took when he was on there. He kinda, I'll give Jeff credit. Yeah. Jeff at least redirected. Whereas yeah. him and I were just like two ADHD guys. And- I, I gave Jeff a little heads up too. I was like, cause he actually was the one that said, you think you can hook me up with Matt Cox? And I was like, yeah, I was like, if you go on there, I'm going to just give you a heads up. You're going to have to lead it. Cause he knows absolutely. He doesn't claim to either, but he knows absolutely. You, you know what I liked? And I recommended him the Encore interview, the guy that drove up a $120 million company and then went absolutely to shit based off of some Yes, I need to get him. I need to get with I'll, him. I'll, 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 yeah, well, you guys are connected, I believe. But uh, I, think, I think we are. I thought, yeah, he said, I thought, Matt sent me a text yeah, today, I, and he was like, do you have anybody I might can interview and dot, 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 that isn't a mobster? <laughs> I love it. I mean, I just have very little interest. I, I just, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand the appeal. I don't understand idolizing someone that shakes people down or forces <laughs> them to pay extortion and that people think they're cool. And I just like, yeah, I, you're not cool. All right. I don't think people yeah. think they're cool, but they yeah. do fall in love with the characters yeah. that they see portrayed on film. All right. Like, okay. Here, here yeah. this might at least give you a little bit of a rationale. Not a, so if you do agree, but you may understand. The Godfather is like the Bible of of anything anything mafia related, right? In terms of movies, and the, and if you look, they don't mention the word mafia. It's a parable of the American success story, capitalism, family, loyal and loyalty and trust, and all of us yearn to kind of go back to those days. And it just happened to be a mafia flick that was like ground zero, and since then it took off. Goodfellas. Donnie Brasco. I mean, you name it, you know? Yeah. And that was interesting too. getting a chance to talk with Chris and him. Tell me some of the nuances that his father played in that movie. Like he was actually the one that, you know, was kind of set the stamp down. of we will allow you to make this movie, but 
you're not going to use the word mafia. Like the word mafia is not used in the Godfather. Oh, even I got though a good guess for both of you. Out. I got a good guess for both of you. Don Capria wrote the Columbo book with the other son who spent you know more time to father because he was older and wrote the book. And there's a conspiracy theory that the mob may have not killed their father. It might have been the government and or some other forces. Chris thinks the government had something to do with his oh, father's yeah. death. Chris, yeah. Chris, one hundred percent believes that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Chris was like a bookie. He was doing his own yeah. thing. He carried the name, but he was kind of like his own crew. He wasn't like as affiliated yeah. as, and he and he says it too. He doesn't come off as a half yeah. mob guy. He had his own crew, but yeah. Chris is fascinating. I mean, and then the other there's another Columbo who was in on the fix for that McDonald's game, the Mc Mc. Uh, McMonopoly, whatever the fuck it was. You know, one of the, you ever seen that, Matt? The McMillions? Yeah. No, but I, I watch, I've, I've heard, I've heard about it. I've, I've watched like, I've watched maybe 10 minutes of it. It's great. And the, Wilbur, what, yeah. what caught, my, what caught right. my interest was there's a part in it where he's, it's not the guy that's actually like taking the pieces, but it is a, yeah. a, a guy that was in the mob that was finding who was going to get them and, and coordinating the payments and the kickbacks. He moved to Charleston, which yep. is where I live, I and opened up a strip club yeah. and got a lot of heat for it. And he's they were showing news clips in there. And he's like, you know, I got, you know, yelled or, you know, berated all the time about doing illegal stuff. He's like, I'm here. I'm trying to do a legitimate business and they still won't let me do it. I'm just like, wow, this is interesting. I've never seen that. But yeah, the, just the McDonald's story in, its, okay. in and of itself, it's good to watch. Um, like that dude was basically taking the winnings. He figured out a, a he stole a roll of seals basically, and he was able to open up the envelope, get the winning ones out that he knew were winners, put BS ones in there, put that seal back, and nobody ever knew that it had been opened. Yep. And then you would find, you know, I see Matt Cox walking on the street. Hey Cox, you want yep. this, you know, million dollar piece? I'm gonna need, you know, half of it or whatever. And what these people don't realize is, you know, that's taxed. So you're only probably getting, you know, 600,000, whatever yeah. you, you wind up with very little after they get their cut of it is what happened. So he would, he would pay them money and then take a piece of it and they would be the patsies, but to go full circle, uh, it was Mark Wahlberg and Steve Lev, Steve Levinson, who is the other creator of entourage. So a lot of the entourage guys are the guys who produced that particular documentary. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's worth a look if you got some time. And it's not as mobbish as, cause I know you hate the mob. It's not as mobbish yeah. as you would think. <laughs> what was that guy's name? The f uncle something? Uh, the, <laughs> I can't remember what it was. You never, it was like, it was almost like that inspector gadget commercial. You always seen his hand or some shit. You never, you never saw his face. <laughs> did they even ever show his face at the end of it? I don't think so. I don't think they ever I did. I thought, how do you pull that off? You do a damn four part series. You don't even see the guy, yep. but I don't know. He, he had, I mean, it was, it was doing good. And then that mob guy, whoever it was, he wound up dying. In a car he died, right? yeah, he died in a car crash. Yeah. That, that kind of screwed everything up yep. after that. It was really off the rails. Went downhill. And then his wife, like kind of, yeah, it was, it was a weird story, but yeah. So on another topic. <laughs> well, Matt <laughs> stole my identity. Yeah, it's not. Oh, oh yeah. Tell that. So I was going to talk about how you just redid when it, Wade just went and redid all of the thumbnails on his channel. You've got what? Another five or ten, something like that? Uh, it's it's pretty much done. I think there's maybe only one or two. The Gene the only ones good. I haven't done. Gene Wood is good. And I saw the raised brow. When I saw the yeah. raised brow, I said, he's either using Kobe. But is it Kobe? What's your guy's name? I was using uh Matt's guy. Oh. Colby? Cole, yeah. No, I've done, I've done no, all these on myself. He did them. He did them all. So yeah, I've, I've are you giving a royalty to Matt or no? No, no, no. He just told me, dude, you got to do better. These suck. Yeah. I, like you're, you're, you got some, your problem, biggest problem is your, uh, is the thumbnails. And then he screenshotted somebody that was like, you know, I like Wade's channel, but his thumbnails aren't very interesting. And, oh, he, no. and he commented, he's like, I tried to tell him that. And he screenshotted the whole thing to me. He's like, you see, I'm not the only one. But so I'm like, all right. And I went and read it. I want to go back to Matt in a second. I'll say this on every time you meet the best Matt Cox interview of all of them aside from well, Lex is up there is a Julian Dory second edition with you and Jim Diorio Diorio. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was, I, I, I actually shit. Like it was, it was the funniest. Like I, I couldn't, I had to watch it like three times. I love Julian as a friend. I had him on my pod, but you were just in rare form. And then Jim was kind of like the normal 
semi-normal FBI voice of reason trying to make sense of what you're doing from the legal aspect. And then he's like pointing out where like you got fucked and you're like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's my favorite. That's fine. Well, no, Tom, I did get, I went through a situation where I guess somebody was trying to, to who do me or, or fuck me over yeah. financially somehow or another. Yeah. Um, my wife gets home slightly earlier than I do. Typically she checks the mail. This is good. So I come in, I look on the table, didn't see anything, you know, didn't think much of it later on that night, seven, or eight o'clock. She goes to walk the dog. She comes back in. She's got the mail in her hand and she's like, what the hell is this? And she's holding it in her hand. I'm like, well, I don't know. You're not showing it to me. <laughs> and she hands it to me. And it is, it doesn't say my name on this paper, but it is a paper from American express with a card on it. It says, congratulations on becoming an American express card holder. Please call in to this number. You'll need your social security number to activate. And that's it. Doesn't say Wade Williamson anywhere on this damn thing. And it's a female's name, which made it. I wish to God it could have just been a man thing. It was a female's name at the bottom, Tierra Lemons, L E M O N S. And so I'm like, I don't know. Like, how do you even know that was supposed to be for me? It doesn't. The only thing it did have on it was my address, but the name was wrong or you know, it, it just had the address. Yeah. Like, it could have been the people, you know, we had people just moving across the street, you know, they're typing, they, they sevens next to eight, you know, they just put it in wrong. I'm like, just throw it away. And so she questions me a little bit more and then she leaves it be. This was on like a Friday and I completely forgot about it. Monday at like 11 o'clock sends me a text. She's like, you need to call me now. And I didn't see that text. So I got a call. I was like, are you by yourself? And I'm like, oh, no. well, no, I'm at work. She's like, you need to get by yourself now. Oh no, that's never good. Right. That's never good. Yeah. I'm thinking it's something with my daughter. My daughter had some shit going on. So you walk outside and she's like, if you got something to tell me, motherfucker, you better tell I mean, she's going off. <laughs> like, you better tell me right now, who the hell is Tierra Lemons? And I'm like, who is she? Oh, what are you talking about? I forgot about the card. She calls American Express. Oh, my God. And gives the number on the card and says, I want to know why this card was sent to my house. And he said, well, it's not their card. They were made a user on the account and she said well the only person that has this account is my husband and he's like yeah that would be a wade williamson and she said yeah that's my oh, husband he said yeah he added her as a user oh no whoa and she was like oh he did did he and he oh. was like yes ma'am he said that was the only way he we would have sent this card out as if he added her so yeah he had to add her as an authorized user you might want to talk to him about it oh and i so, will yeah oh yeah yeah oh i will and so you can imagine she's not a happy camper and for Four or five minutes into this conversation, I really thought she was breaking balls, yeah. like just messing with me. And then I found out, I was like, are you really like serious, serious? Because if so, I'm about to call American Express. A, if I was doing something funny, this guy just dimed me the fuck out. Yeah, what happened to bro code? Yeah, no bro code whatsoever. <laughs> not an American no, Express. Oh, ma'am, this is not our department. You guys might want to see some counsel. No, none of that. He just straight up dimed me out. And B... Obviously, your security isn't too good because you're just telling this woman that you don't even know is my wife that's calling up here all kind of information. And so I called and I'm just I'm a little I'm like, listen, ma'am, you don't understand. Like, I could very well get stabbed when I go home. <laughs> One of your people just told my wife that I put a woman as an authorized user on a card. Oh, my. I'm so sorry this happened. Well, it does show that you you authorized uh, Tierra Lim. I was like, wow, I didn't authorize shit. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's always been me on this account. I've had this account for 20 years. Long story short, she's like, well, we'll give you a new card. We'll flag it as fraud and all that. This just did not go over well in my home. And I was about to go out of town. I was about to go to New York. And so, of course, that she's like, it's mighty funny. This card comes right before you're supposed to go out of town. And it's got a woman's name on it. I mean, it was just on and on and on. And I, I didn't know what to well, say. Well, the part Wade leaves out is he then gets a call at 2.30 in the morning from Pizza Hut. <laughs> no, no, I promise you. That was that was, that was not in the in the fold. And she keeps going. I was like, you know, I'm going to call Matt and ask him. But she said, you think Matt did this? And I'm like, <laughs> she's like, you think he did this? I'm like, no, he didn't do it. I said, he might can tell me what's going on here. And I did. I called him and he's like, well, you, you know, they probably done it to 10 people and we're just waiting by the mailbox and you happen to grab it before they got there. And I'm just like, you know, trying to find anything that he can tell me that I can tell her to, 
to satisfy this. And obviously she's not letting it go. And this is like 10 30, 11 o'clock. And are you sure there's nothing you're telling me about this Tierra lemons? And I'm just like, son of a bitch. I'm just going to tell you this one time. Her name is Lamont's get it right. And that did not go over well. <laughs> and so after a week of sleeping on the couch, you know, I had to just look, I don't know anything about this. I promise you we're going to get to the bottom of it. American express still has not contacted me they sent me a new card but they still haven't contacted right, so me and I'm, we're lucky to have the great matt cox here give us your professional opinion like what happens they they send in the mail and they take it and then call in what's the play on that matt yeah I, I i think probably somebody was able to call up um as wade and had enough information to convince them to send out a card and they were hoping to swing by, you know, they figure out ah, it's going to be here in five to 10 days. We'll just go by that. The, we'll go by there randomly and check and maybe we'll get the card. And then we'll just, all you gotta do is, you know, you could use the spoof, uh, the spoof app yeah. to call them back and say, Hey, you know, punch in the information and boom, you know, that, you know, to activate the card. Now you've got a card that's activated. So at that point, they probably would have tried to change Wade's contact information. Mm-hmm. You know, like, hey, contact me by phone. Um, and then they change if they could change the um, do that, they could go out and use the card because even if they called, they just call Wade and they would get the the scammer and he'd answer as Wade and he'd clarify everything. So it means that somebody out there has your information. That's, that's but it's funny. yeah. But it's difficult to, you know, it's I didn't have enough of it. Otherwise, I didn't know there was no room on that card. So that was really a waste of time. So <laughs> there were a slightly lack on some of the information. What listen, what I thought was funny, I was telling Jess, I was like, listen, I wish I could remember that chick's name because I could order uh I could order flowers oh, to the house you. in her name. I said, I mean, I said, how funny would that be? Jess was like, You've got fucking problems. I'm like, Yeah, but could you imagine? I mean, the, you have to I said, look at it from the entertainment value of me. Stop thinking about Wade. <laughs> like, yeah. Boy, how funny would that be to sit outside the house when those flowers came? It'd be a good show. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was not a good week in the in the Williamson household there. The, it's still like the car. I was like, you could throw that away. She just keeps it laying on the table. She's like, maybe one day somebody will come by here for it, and I'm gonna well, I want to have it. Well, here hold on, me. Matt. The person that would do it, right? Wouldn't they want it in their real name so they have their like their, their you know their license or other other documents? Well, I mean, maybe, but maybe maybe they already have an ID in that name. Oh, got it. Or even if it's in their name, it's like I was an authorized user. I mean, it's it's Wade's word against their. He's responsible for it. Mm. They don't even need their social security number. Yeah. He could just say, This is the name of the person. Yeah. Send them a card. If they got an ID saying they're that person, they could use the card. Wow. Yeah. And if they did happen to do it like that, like that happened to be the if they would have rode by, that would have been the perfect day. Cause I just assumed my wife checked the mail and she didn't. She didn't check it till later that night. Now we do live in a neighborhood where I think it would be easier to spot some random person pulling up multiple times to the same mailbox. Um, but still it was just very odd. You, you know what I do? Um, cause I have a business and I'll add people on. I asked them to actually FedEx it. So it's sent via FedEx. I, I don't know if it would help, but that's what I do. I so, if there's a Tierra lemons out there, you've caused me all kinds of grief. Just so you know that. Um, Just did you ever, back in my bed. Did you ever see that TikTok where the guy took a bunch of um, he takes a bunch of uh, uh hair squishies or whatever you call yes, those hair cars and throws cars. them in the cars it, it, in the uh, yeah the uh, employees' cars that work at the in the in the um in the parking lot. Boom, boom, boom. He's like, boy, he's like, boy, it's gonna be crazy tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> or the guy that said, "There's another one where the guy's like, I'm bored, I'm bored." So I just ordered flowers to my next door neighbor, Todd's yep. house, you know, in the name of whatever. So then it looks like Todd accidentally sent the flowers to the wrong yep. house and his wife gets some flowers for some there's girl. A, there's, a, there, there's a TikTok where the girl's like, whose is this? You just see you know, her hand. Whose is this? Whose is this? He's like, I don't know. He's like, she's like, no, whose is this? And they pan on her and she's bald. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really glad you didn't remember that girl's name too, by the way, that would have not went over well. Um, like, the timing of it is just really suspicious. You're going out of town. Oh, You're listen, give that card to somebody. Listen, Jess will go through my, my, uh, comments. 
first of all, it was I, my life was so much easier when it was ninety eight percent of my viewers were male. <laughs> it, it's up to about fifteen percent female, yeah. and and now so women will consistently leave messages. And so she's, you know, Matt, you're amazing. Oh my God. I could just listen to your voice forever. Like these are, to me, these are things that guys have said, like, bro, I go to sleep with, uh, uh you know, I'll go to sleep and leave, leave, uh, you know, leave the, your podcast on. Like I can just go to sleep with your voice. Like they don't mean anything by it. It's like, you know, no homo, you know, but it, it's, it's not, we, it's not, yeah, it, but, but, but a woman does it. Man, I got to hear it, bro. And then if they listen, and then if they have a picture and then if it's like um, Instagram, Ooh. some some chick fucking hits me up on Instagram and just sends me a message. Who is this? I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, why is she contacting you? I don't know. She said, you know, and, and then they'll say stuff that really will be like, listen, I'll, oh, trust me, I've got them where I've looked at it and I've been like, oh, I've got to race that. <laughs> oh, no, no. Like I, you know, the, even if they still say something weird, like some girl one time sent me something that said, um, um, you're the one or, or, or you're on my list. I, I, uh, I do anything to meet you. Oh, and I thought, oh, that's gotta go <laughs> or to, delete, delete. Like, I'm like, oh no. And you know, Jess will go through my shit and I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm sitting there laying in bed. Like I'm, I'm, I'm relaxing for the night and it'll be like, who's Jennifer 600. Fucking knows Jennifer six hundred is. What are you? What are you talking about? I don't know. I, I was five ninety nine. Though I, what's really yeah. what's, what makes it worse is when I start laughing about it. Yeah, I'll be like, "Do you know how crazy you sound right now?" And she, and, which makes her even madder. Yeah, that doesn't help. No. Yeah. And so you know, it, it ends up being a twenty minute of her, you know, pacing and, and oh, you think it's funny? You think it's funny? I'm like. I think it is funny. I think you're crazy. Like, do you know you're crazy? Like, and then, and she knows she's crazy because sometimes she'll do something like that and then she'll get pissed and she'll go, I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. And I'm like, all right, well, go to bed. And she'll walk off. And like 10 minutes later, she'll, she'll come down stairs and she'll go, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. And I'm like, it, it's okay. And she's like, I don't know what happens to me. I don't, you know. <laughs> so I, mean, I start laughing again i'm like oh my god i'm like i don't know don't you do you know that you're you're she's like you're not helping i'm trying to apologize like, oh, okay go ahead apologize you know yeah i've had to swing the fact that me going to some of these places that i've had to go through in the past to be a judge at some of these contests and everything therefore you know furthering the the channel, you know, that was uh, the benefit of it. And, it. and it really was. These girls have interesting conversations. My highest rated video is a form. Uh, actually, I don't think she's former anymore. She's still working is a adult film star. Ryan Connor got an amazing reach, shouted it out on her channel, on her Instagram. That's got a, a great number of followers. I don't know what she's at. They keep getting knocked down because you know, they push the boundaries with the, the pictures, but I mean, it was really like if I always tell people like, go listen to the, the podcast and it's not your generic sex talk type shit. You know, right. we actually had a really good conversation of like, I always am curious how people got into the business. Then what kept them there? What's your plans? Because they don't exactly have social security for these types of things. What did COVID do for the business? You know, what is, what did doors that only fans mm -hmm. open up and, she was like really big in the nineties Then she had a daughter. She stopped for like 10 or 15 years. Then she came back by then. This is like, she was obviously in the MILF, you know, category. So there's like a whole nother demographic for her to, to there. And she was actually a really cool chick, man. I mean, I enjoyed that interview and it, it, it's right now it's my top jeans closing in jeans at like 73,000 and Ryan's at like 76 or so. So jeans gaining ground. Bro, I, I could never, never yeah, you, interview a, a, a porn star. I mean, as in yeah. you're not allowed or you just couldn't. Oh, I, I mean, I'm allowed, but I know the fallout from that. You know, I'm not, I'm just not, I'm not willing to accept with the, <laughs> listen, I, I, yeah, I just, I just can't, I just can't. It's the old adage about sex sells or sex appeal right. sells 100%. Listen, I just had a video that we released, um, of a cat burglar. Yes. Oh yeah. She, she was very interesting. 
um, burglarized over 200 houses, um, $6 million, did like 10 years. And uh, uh, listen, and Jess is like leaving as she's showing up. Jess turns around and sat in that fucking stool right over there. <laughs> the entire podcast. You know, and smiling and just as sweet as can be. And I thought, I all I could think of was, you need to, like, don't you smile at this chick. Don't you flirt with this chick. Don't, you know, you need to. And every time, you know, I'd start, I'd laugh. I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> and I'd go and throw <laughs> Jess and she'd be like, She'd be sitting there like this. She go. <laughs> oh my god! I seen her interview on. Uh, I think Ian. She was on Ian's uh, platform. I knew I remembered her from somewhere because when it popped up on. Originally, I thought that was Molly Bloom. You know who Molly Bloom is. I've heard the name. I would love to interview Molly. She um. There's a movie. It's called Molly's Game. Oh yeah, yeah. And basically, she was running high-end card games with Russian some mob. of the upper echelon of Hollywood. And, yeah, the Russian mob was backing a lot of it. Like, it was the games that, like, Ben Affleck, Leonardo DiCaprio, Tobey Maguire would be at. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm working on a show, the first show that I've ever done where I'm, I don't have a guest. And it's about the Viper Room and the history of the Viper Room. And I think that in the Viper, she was running the games out of a room in the Viper room after it wasn't up under depth's control anymore is what I heard. Right. Um, yeah, I, I know the book came out when I was in prison and it was pat being passed around. I never read it, yeah. but I did see the movie. Yeah. I watched the movie on a plane, um, somewhere and it was, uh, it was pretty good. It was pretty true to form. I mean, like, I guess she, she had a, she could have named a lot of names and, and jammed a lot of people up and she didn't. And she was able to get off. Well, I say get off. She, I think she did do a little bit of time, but, you know, she didn't, she didn't put anybody else up under the bus, I guess. That's right. And I, I'd love to, she does a lot of speaking engagement stuff. Now she might be a little bit too big for, uh, the britches of crime and entertainment, but I would love to interview her at some point. That would be awesome. When Jess first moved in, we went and, uh, we did, we, we were you know working out in the, in the mornings. Right. So there was a machine that was a, a bench press. And when I would do the bench press, you know, it's, but it's a machine, right? It's, you know, it's bench, but it's a machine. So I would do it and it would pinch your back. And so you would get these little lines on your back. <laughs> I remember we came home from the gym. I took a shower. I got out and, and, and Jess goes, what are those? And I was like, well, what, what? She goes, what's on your back? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I turned around and looked and I was like, and, and keep in mind, there's multiples of them. So it, it's not like it's like one track. It's it's multiples at, at slightly different angles. So it looks like some chick. And I was like, I don't know. Did you do that to me? And she was like, I'm like, when did you do that? And she's like, no, I didn't. And I'm like, um, cause she's left scratch marks. It's, you know, there have been bite marks and stuff. So, um, you know, I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. And she's like, well, that's not good enough. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I said, you know what I think it was? I think it was that machine at the gym because I can feel it pinching. She's like, oh, the machine at the gym. The machine <laughs> at the gym. And I start laughing. I'm like, yeah, the machine at the gym. So what do you think? You know, and I start laughing. And everything. I'm, I'm like, what, what do you think I'm doing? What, what, what do you think? I, you know, that you, you, I moved you in so that I could run around. What, what do you think? Where am I going? When's this happening? So I, I start laughing and I kind of blow it off. She's irritated. I can tell she's irritated for a little bit, but she stops talking. She stops talking about it, right? A week or two later, she sees them again, but she starts to put it together. And now she kind of pays attention and she realizes that fucking that it's that one bench that it is doing it. She and she now like six months later, or a year later, she told me, she said, you have no idea <laughs> how upset I was. And I, and I really didn't. I'd laughed about it never heard about it again. But for like weeks, she's. She's tracking me. She's stopping by the house randomly. She's, <laughs> she's looking at my phone. She's, you know, it's like, what do you, what do you think's happening here? Like, that's insanity. Like, um, but yeah, I, I just didn't realize like, yeah, bro, they're crazy. They get crazy. Well, I got a, I got a quick good one. So I, uh, my wife being my wife is checking out my Facebook and I, I don't go on Facebook. I just don't, I go on for work to do ads, but I, I just, right. that's the only reason why I have it. So evidently, I liked 
a girl's photo. She pulls up and says, who is this? I don't know. Who is this? I don't know. Well, why did you like her photo? I didn't like her photo, right? So thank frigging God that I have a, it has a login when you log into your Facebook, when I log in myself. My last login was to say Tuesday. The like was on a Wednesday. So I physically couldn't have liked it. So I think Facebook automatically likes things for you without you even doing it just for the algorithm. Oh, God, yeah. But thank God I had proof. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> she's right here. Um, actually, no, I it does. Proof. It does do that. It's it set up on my account me one all time. the time. No, I had physical proof because you got to live and die by the sword, right? Meaning if I catch you on a like, when did you log in? So luckily, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. And I'm a mark, a digital market. I should know this. That when you log into Facebook, it gives you your login and where you log in. You would think. You would think. <laughs> and sure enough, thank goodness that um, I logged in prior to that. I did not log in after. And On that phone. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, here's one. This is, this is funny. This, like, I wanted to talk about how I'm having problems getting guests. And like th this is what it's turned into. Um, so I have one, uh, Jess. So if you're friends with someone, right, then it'll say, you know, it'll it'll do a um, oh a friend or, or a friend suggestion. Yeah. suggestion. You have you have a mutual friend. So every once in a while, some hot chick will show up, boom, and it'll say friend request. You have a mutual friend. She's like, oh, I wonder who that is. Click, motherfucker. <laughs> she's like how do you know her and i'm like i don't know her really well you're friends with her i'm like okay well keep in mind i've had that account since the since <laughs> we were in we, we were in the halfway house and we didn't date for a long period of time and there was a time where i was basically everybody that even came in i was like yeah, fr you know accepted yep. accepted accepted i was like plus i own i i have a podcast so people will come she's like oh so you see this chick and you you accept it. You don't even know her. You don't even know her. I'm like, right, I don't know her. You know, and then of course she's got to go through her whole account. Yeah. You know, then she's got listen, it got so bad one day. I, you know, and, and I just laugh about it. But she's like, you know, if it bothered you, she you can go through my entire thing. I don't have any guys that I don't specifically know. And if they hit on me at all, I'm like, I've never even talked to this chick. Like, I don't know who this girl is. <laughs> I've never there's no you can look at my Instagram, my my uh uh, my messenger. I've never messaged this person. I'm like, you're a crazy person right now. You're being crazy. And she's like that. No, no. She's like, I would never, I would never. I'm like, let's do this because I don't know her. I'm not upset. If I take her off my account, would you like for me to go through my entire Facebook of, and I think it's like fucking two or 3000 people. I go and, and unfriend every woman that I don't specifically know. Or isn't a wife of somebody or a friend of somebody? Would you like me to do that? And she's like, I mean, if, if that's what you want to do, I don't want to make you do it. Like, you want to make me do it. Listen, I said, look, I'm happy to do it because I never go on Facebook. Yeah. And she, and she knows it because she gets pissed off because she'll, she'll post something and she'll say, did you see my post? I'm like, what post? The post I put on Facebook. I'm like, I don't go on Facebook. And she's like, well, I posted something and it got like 170 likes. And you're not one of them. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll go like it. If No, 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 don't, don't like it. <laughs> don't like it. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you so, this. Yeah. Sorry. It's just, you know, you know how it is. It's insanity. Oh, oh. It's insanity. This one was the, it was a good, so it was before I was working night shifts. Like the job I had before, you know, my life went completely off the, the rails. I was working, I would work four days day shift. Then I'll be off for four days. Then I would work four nights. And you you essentially rotated that schedule. So on night shift, I would call ahead to this gas station that I passed every day and order a sub. It was a gas station. We had a subway inside of it. And I would call in and I would order a sub. That way it would be ready by the time I got there. So I wouldn't have to wait in line, you know, because sometimes if the line was long, I'd be late for work. Couldn't do that. So I'd call when I left the house. Typically, by the time I got there, it was ready. I'd pick it up and go, and this has been going on for a while. So we're having, you know, a bad little spout in the, uh, in the marriage. 
And she goes, she's like, what is she's like, I need you to tell me who you're talking to every day when you leave the house. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, every night. She's like, it's only when you're on night shift. You don't do it in the morning. Bitch must be asleep. You only do it at nighttime. <laughs> and you call her as soon as you walk out the door. And I'm just like, what? Are you? I'm, I'm sitting, I'm like, I'm quiet. She's taking that as I'm like nervous. But I'm like, who do I call every time I walk out the door? And I go back through my phone. And in the phone, it's Subway, right? which is not the best look either. Cause you know, that's kind of what people put pizza hut or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I was like, you know what? Why don't you call them? Why don't you go investigate this? And she's like, why don't you just tell me what the hell's going on? I'm like, it's a gas station that has a subway in it that I order food from that. I only do on the four nights that I'm working night shift. And so after that, she kind of started laughing about it. And I'm like, I'm not really laughing right now. I'm a little terrified that, yeah. that you're laughing about it because a minute ago, you're ready to kill me. And this is all over subway, you know, just me eating. Maybe if you done a little something in the kitchen, we wouldn't be having this. Wait, 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 wait. Let, let, let me, let me, let me uh, unpack this. You had subway in your phone and you're the only person in the world where it was actually subway. Yeah. I was, yeah. she didn't even know that it was in the phone as subway. She would just, she was seeing that it was called, every day almost as soon as i left the house which was what i would do because i'd had a time to where when i left if i called them right then by the time i got there they would finally you know have it ready and i could just go in pay and and, and go and so when i was going back through i'm like all right so that was the day i went to the day before and i'm not think it's not registering that subway is what she's talking about and then finally i'm like oh that's what she's talking about. And so at that point, I'm just like, I'll, I'll give you the number. You call them. You know, you call, you call, you call. See, go investigate it. This will be funny. But yeah, it was actually Subway. And I, I don't, here's what I, what kills me is as many times as I've had the accusations and it's been like, and, and you're like, well, let me go ahead and show you what this is. And then it, she sees it and she's like, oh, uh, okay. It's like, look, like if it was once, if I was wrong once, I'd be like, okay, well, doesn't mean I'm always going to be wrong. But if I was wrong once, and then twice, and then three times, and then four <laughs> times, and then five times, and then six times. I'm like, how many times do you have to be shown that this is in your head yeah. for you to realize, I need to stop with this? That's and like when I went to New York, she's like, you know, you didn't get until three in the morning, which I did get in late. We were out fairly late. But I was like, you only take what I got out of that night. Trip eating, trip. Eating Subway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, I got a podcast out of it. So. I actually met Gene. Gene was in New York. Um, I didn't know he was in New York. He put up a post of saying like eating Chinese food in Manhattan. And I hit him up. I'm like, you're in the city. And he's like, yeah, I'm like me too. So we get together that night. And one of my buddies that I had on, um, that had been in jail for 22 years for something he didn't do. His name was Andre Brown. He was already coming over to meet me. So we all hung out at the hotel. Turns out they knew each other. And Tom, you may know this lawyer, um, a little bit better than Matt, but, I want to say his name was Tom too. He was tied in with the bananas. He got caught up in something that was going on. He got disbarred. He was, I guess, key and Vinnie gorgeous going to jail. Yeah, I know. Um, I don't know the list. I know who you're talking about though. Yeah. I think his name was Tom or Eric or something, something along those lines. Tommy, Tommy was yeah. his name. Tommy. Um, I don't remember the last name, but anyways, that was the lawyer that Andre had. Um, you know, Gene knew him obviously. So they was, they kind of hit it off. They shared those stories. They went to a lot of the same prisons and knew a lot of people in the prisons and, and all of that. But we hung out, then we went to a, a nightclub up there and we somehow or another got into a conversation. I don't even remember how it started, but it was with a group of girls and they were saying that I'd done a podcast and the girl was like, Oh, I got a story for you. And I'm like, well, a lot of people said they got a story, you know, it was an interest. And she's like, I got to turn myself into federal prison in like 72 hours. And I'm like, that's right. All right. Well, you got my attention. You can keep talking. And yeah, she had to turn. This was like Saturday night, Tuesday. She had to turn herself in to prison. So I'm like, what are you doing Monday? <laughs> She's like, nothing. I'm like, all right, we'll do the podcast Monday. So we did it Monday and I put it out, I think like Tuesday or Wednesday. But I told him, I'm like, that's what I'm looking for. When I don't care where I'm at. You know, if I go, I'm looking for a story. I'm looking for something to put on the show. I'm not looking for anything else. That's what I'm looking for. And it actually was a good podcast. The 25th hour, I think. I know what you call it, Matt. 25th hour podcast. And the, and the, and the occasional foot long. Yeah, yeah. The occasional foot long meatball marinara. That was a great movie. The 25th hour. It was. We had Eddie Edward Norton. 
Norton. Yeah. And Barry yeah. Pepper. I love that speech he gives. In oh, that I was about to say, I've always wanted to find like a poster that's that got all that shit in it. It'd probably be a lot to read, but it was it was really cool. I, I like Edward Norton. Uh, that was one of his better movies, but he kind of hadn't really been doing much lately. No. I mean, I, I always wonder what happens to those guys. I, I feel like I know exactly how it works now because I've watched all set, all eight seasons of Entourage. So I know exactly how, how the movie industry works now. I got it. I got it down. What I understand, he was not an easy person to work with. Um, he was notoriously, I guess, uh, difficult to get along with. Is some of could have been what led to some of that. But I mean, like his American History X movie that he did, that was phenomenal. Um, what was another one he did that was really? I liked oh, him in the Rounders. Score. Rounders was one of his. Rounders was good. I liked him in the score with Robert De Niro, where he played like the kid that had something wrong with him or whatever. But really, he was casing the joint out the whole time. You ever seen oh, yeah, that? that? Yeah, of course. I the, yeah. the other score. Yeah, it's, he was really good at that. So, um, God, that was a great, that's, that's great. That's one of those ones at the very end of the movie where you're like, man. And he, and he said, yeah, he's like, uh, he's like, what, what does he say? How's he say to, um, uh, did you start thinking uh, you were smarter than me? Yeah, exactly. And he's like, oh, you know what I got? You know what I got? What do you got? You sure you know what you got? And he's like, yeah. And he opens it up. He's like, all right now. Hey, wait a minute now. Let's talk about this. No. What'd you say? Tough. Uh, screw you. You know? It was a great movie. Great yeah. movie. I think it was one of Brando's last movies too. Marlon Brando mm -hmm. was in that movie. He was one of his yeah. last ones before he passed away. Did you ever see the movie? Um, uh, the uh, is it? I think it is called The Heist. With yeah, with Gene Hackman. Hackman. That's a great I movie. Love that one. I was actually sitting there thinking about that when you said that. I was thinking about the the heist, another good one. I don't know if a lot of people like are hip to that movie, but it was good. It had Devito in it. Um, and then at the end, like they had the gold painted like black or something like that, right? Because he yeah, rides yeah, off it, the truck and it like, scrapes against something. Yeah, it looked like uh, uh like it was, you know, just iron pipes, raw iron yeah. pipes or something. And it was yeah. actually that's where the gold was. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you never really know because you see him making the gold. Yeah. You see him making the pipe, so you think, oh, it's on the boat. That's yeah. Um, oh man, what was I gonna tell you? Uh yeah, I love that where the guy shoot. I forget what the name of that the uh, the black actor is, the tall black guy. Um, that's part of his crew. He's a he's a great actor. In um, that movie, in the heist, in that, yeah, where he says to what is the guy? It's not. Anyway, he says to this one actor, he looks at him and he says, uh, "Um, like like they're putting up cones. They've got they got cones up and they got hard like they're really." dressing it up to just to sit on the side of the road. He's like, what's with all this stuff? And he's like, I mean, well, why don't we just do this? And he's like, well, he's like, you know, just in case and he's like, for what? He's like, just in case. And he's like, for what? And he goes, and he says, look, he said, you ever, uh, you ever run around on your girl? And he goes, yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. He said, you ever, um, you ever call a buddy for an out to be your alibi? And he goes, yeah, yeah, of course he is. And then you come home. And your girl doesn't think even think you did anything wrong. And she never asks where you were and she doesn't call your buddy. He's like, yeah, of course. He said, was it a waste of time setting up the alibi? And he goes, no, no. He said, right. And it's basically it's like subterfuge is never a waste of time, even if it's unnecessary. Yeah. So it's a great, it's a great, um, it's a horrible segue into the conversations we were just talking about. It is, but I'm not, but I'm not really, you two are, you know, <laughs> my, uh, my wife's on a boat right now. So Delroy Lindo, I think is the guy you're referring to. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. My favorite one was they were talking about is your guy cool. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, my motherfucker's so cool. When he goes to sleep, sheep count him. <laughs> <laughs> so qu question pivot a little bit are any of you guys uh basketball fans nick fans or basketball fans at all i watch it when it gets down like very very low like to the you know maybe four teams left or something like that. there's so many damn games in there i'm like spoiled by football because like every game when it gets down to the playoffs and football like every game matters well so i'm always glued to that in basketball you know if i miss the first two or three i still get to watch the fourth one even if they get swept. the um the knicks uh the knicks sixer series was insane 
there were yeah. two games aside. It won six points in like less than two seconds, and the other one tied up at the last minute went into overtime. It, the series was insane between the Knicks and the Sixers. It was insane. And the money that was bet on that was crazy because I remember that first game, it like people won on the under by like a half a point and had that shot counted that he just kind of lofted up from half court when the game was over. If they would have hit, it would have costed Vegas, I think, a lot of money or, or something. The guy, like got, the guy got, like, bumped, fouled, and was supposed to kind of, like, just whatever, shot, got it in, and then hit the free throw. It was insane. It was, like, like a unlikely event, and then it went to overtime, but Knicks wound up winning anyway, which is good to be a series. That, that's probably one of the cooler interviews that I've ever done because I've seen the uh, – the documentary on Netflix, Bad Sport. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Yeah. And then I reached out to the guy that was pretty much the mastermind of fixing yep. about yep. four games yeah. um, in the Arizona State College basketball yep. uh, arena. And so he was, um, there was a campus bookie there uh, named Benny Silman. And he, pr- he was, you know, taking bets, obviously, and Gagliano, Joe Gagliano, uh, to my knowledge, not mob affiliated, um, was basically beating his brains in because his lines were not accurate. But the uneducated bettors were losing. So he, he tells them, look, I'm killing it here with these kids, but you're taking everything I'm winning. I got to cut you off. And But they remain friends. And one of the guys on the campus gets indebted to him like almost 20 grand. And his name is Stevan Headache Smith. He is, at the time, the top basketball player in the country. Hands down, there's nobody better. He is the guy. That was back where they weren't necessarily conserving energy as much, like they would play the full game. And he tells him, he's like, I got to, he calls him, and he basically breaks it down. He's like, look, I got him for 20 grand. We're going to agree. If he'll come on board, we'll wipe his debt. We'll pay him 20 grand. He doesn't have to lose the game, just not cover the spread. And... They did it. They did two. It went off without a hitch. And according to Joe, um, everything was good. I, I don't know how much time had passed. Those two games flew under the radar because they were right around the time the Super Bowl was being played. So, so much money was on the Super Bowl. Everybody kind of ignored college basketball at that point. Super Bowl was over. So that's a lot of betting is now deceased because a lot of people only do football. Um now more of attention is being paid to this money that's being bet. Headache calls Joe and wants to bet like 20000 on himself against LSU. And he's like, you know, worst case, he would already made, you know, however much, God knows how much money. So he's like, worst case scenario, if he loses, I know I got him for a third game. Best case scenario, he wins, and I, I see a good basketball game. So he says he goes, he flies there, goes to the game, and it was like, I want to say the spread was like five and a half, They were down by six or something like that. The game is essentially over, but they do have like two seconds left. People are starting to walk onto the court and headaches like yelling for the ball. Like, give me the fucking ball dribbles down and he goes to pull up this three. Had he made it, they would have covered the spread. So he'd have won. It rims out, goes in rims out. So now he's on the hook for 20 grand. They have to do a third game. They pull that one off. Everybody makes a ton of money. By this time they brought somebody else on the team in. Other people started hearing about it and getting hip to it. Apparently another like drug dealer type of guy with a shady background found out he was wanting in on it. And the fourth game that they were going to do, there was so much money placed on that game that the secret service come into the locker room at halftime. I was like, we don't know exactly what's going on, but we know something's going on. And if you guys don't play up to your full potential, there will be an investigation. And they went out and pretty much obliterated the other team and everybody lost. But he he had it set up, man. Him, his buddies, his dad, they would all just go to these different casinos all day long. So it wouldn't be like one huge bet at one spot. You know, 25000 here, go to the next casino. 25000 here, go to the next casino. 25000 all, you know, up and down the whole damn strip. And they did eventually get busted, but it was like a year after. And Headache got busted. They eventually got Joe... And he went to jail, but he's he doesn't necessarily do one. He's kind of created a podcast. Somebody else runs it for him. But I had him come on, and I mean, it was a very interesting. So I would have gotten sucked into that so bad had I been in that circle. Like I, that would have been right there along with him. 
I'll go ahead and admit it. I would, you know, I would have been right there because it's it's guaranteed. It was guaranteed. They just got too many people involved. That's usually the downfall. So uh, this just reminded me of uh, um, Joey Joey Merlino's. Is it Miss Marlino? Merlino's Joey Mer- Merlino. Merlino. Yeah, Joey Merlino's podcast talking about sports. So I'm wondering, what's does anybody what's going on with with his podcast? Is he still doing YouTube or? Yeah, they. I don't think he's. They're on. They're on YouTube for teasers, and they're driving everybody over to their Patreon account. So they have like a fifteen dollars subscription, and it looks like it seems to be going pretty well for them. They're kind of doing the teasers, a little bit of uh, juice, uh, uh, a little bit of tea. He called out John Gotti Jr. for being a rat. There's kind of people on both sides of the fence on that. And uh, that seemed to serve a little controversy recently. Yeah. And he had Pete Rose on too, though. That was a good that one. Was a, that was a banger, yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that one because Pete obviously kind of around that same situation with the gambling and them banning him from the, the Hall of Fames. You know, because they should let Pete in there. I mean, because all that shit that's going on now with what the – I don't really follow baseball, but Otani, everything's going on with him. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Yeah. I mean, as so long as you're is, not jeopardizing yourself with the, the sport, I mean, if you're not losing on purpose, I don't, you know, that, that, like what the ref did, uh, Donahue, that I think deserved punishment for sure. But if you're betting on yourself, boxers can do it. Floyd Mayweather does it. He bets on himself all the time. Well, Ryan so, Garcia got six to one on his own uh, on his own um, boxing match, and I think he put out two million to win ten or something crazy like that. Hell yeah, good for him. What was you saying, Matt? Oh, I was just wondering what their what their Patreon was up to. I don't know the the numbers on there. I'll give I'll give a little hack. So if you're not signed up, you can see the number of likes, and generally. If you're in Patreon within their within their like kind of their system, if you will, more than likely, probably about fifty to seventy percent are gonna like their, their latest video or on average. So if they have let's say five hundred likes, they probably have about eight hundred subscribers to the Patreon, and then you times it by fifteen, and that's probably what they're making. Yeah, but you can see what they're making. Uh, some some Patreons list the number of subscribers. I don't think there's those. Oh, okay. Uh, just curious. I was going to say, um, okay. Just wondering. I, I do know. I did hear that one that he did on Gotti jr. Uh, basically the pay, which, which was not like, like uncovering a secret. I mean, people had knew that he had talked, um, not necessarily directly put people in jail, but did have a conversation with them. Um, you know, what did, what did you take away from that? Tom, I'm just a load of questions. So, he claims it was a legal strategy, which it was, right? So he kind of gave him a whole bunch of bogus information, information that was either public, et cetera. Where it gets a little dicey, there were two guys that did get kind of tripped up, uh, Joe Watts and Danny Marino. So again, it's real con- in the mob sphere that you and I are in. It's a little controversial because there's a side of game bullshit information and it was, you know, it didn't matter. Then he got the side right. of, well, he sat down with the government, didn't matter. There was two guys individually that may accidentally or serendipitously got tripped up. Um, I personally believe the government said, hey, here's a 302. This guy's going to testify against you as a bluff. I don't think he was ever going to testify. I always say right. this. I was on Angel's show. I like Angel. In my personal opinion, I am not a street guy. I am a regular, you know, four kids. To me, I'm not justified to call anybody a rat. That's just me, right? Now, in that world, if you sit down with the government, I can see why some street guys would see it that way. Yeah. Uh, this is dicey for me. I mean, you know, if you can swindle the government and if you can outsmart them by giving them bogus information or information that leads nowhere, you know, I don't see too much of an issue with it. Um, now, if you put 80 some odd plus people in jail, like, you know, some like people, have done, yeah, yeah. Then, then yeah, that's, that's a little different. And there's a, there's an episode in Sopranos. It's towards the end of the season. It's when Tony and Polly have to actually go on the run um, because they're digging up a, a body that allegedly was Tony's first hit in the series. And so they're kind of flashing back to it. 
and they say that Larry Barisi is talking to the feds. Larry Barisi is played by Tony Darrow, who is, if anybody's ever seen Goodfellas, was the guy that Joe Pesci hit in the face with the bottle in the restaurant scene. And he's been in a ton of other stuff too. And, um, shit, what the hell was I talking about? Well, real quick, Tony Darrow in real life got jammed up. So he, he did get jammed up. He knew a few wise guys. And somebody yeah. either or the money or disrespect him or somebody, he called some wise guys to tune the guy up. They tuned the guy up. Yeah. They made the connection, caught on a wiretap or something else. And they got he done a piece pretty, of time pretty yeah. much pretty jammed. And so so give you kind of like I'll give you my perspective, right? In the nineties in New Jersey, right? If you knew somebody and you had an issue, it wasn't a big deal to call somebody connected. They would not kill yeah. him, but tune the guy up not a big deal like like any any other day of the week to be honest with you right if you if you were in that world but the fact mm-hmm. that it was i guess an actor and they really kind of threw the book at him and make a I statement think he got a few years from it but yeah tony jarrow yeah. got jammed up by a simple calling a wise guy and tuning somebody up that he knew and, and that's what it was i remember and i kind of lost my train of thought there but in the in the show they say that uh, he, his character is talking to the feds or whatever. And he gives them the name of somebody. Actually, I think it was Jackie April in the show, which Jackie had died from years ago. So he's like, yeah, I know who committed the murder It's Jackie April. He's buried under this house. You can find him there. Obviously that's not going to do the government any good because the guy he gave was dead. So right. in those aspects, did he sit down? Did he talk to the government? Yeah, he did. Did it, that maybe shave some time off? Like, you know, I'll tell you where this body is if I can, you know, walk or whatever. And then he tells them it's somebody that's dead. You know, is that considered ratting? No, I consider that smart business. Well, I, I, right. I once, I once asked, uh, and this guy was from the other side. He's from Sicily. Um, may or may not have been connected, but just, just I wanted to kind of get an understanding of the true. The word is called emerita, right? So, what is it? What does it really mean? Like, what's a real old school Sicilian mafioso definition? So. So I'll give you an example. If Wade negotiates a reduction of sentence and meets with law enforcement behind closed doors, even with his attorney, and reduces the sentence, that meeting with law enforcement in any way is breaking omerta. So basically, if you go by the old school definition, you were to not uh, allocute, you're not to you know, admit that you're in the mob, you're not to meet with law enforcement for a sentence reduction, you're not to meet with prosecutors. You're not to meet FBI on a side chat, the kind of little quid pro quo, none of it. So if you kind of go the old school kind of way, and you're not also, you know, also not spoke to the media as well. Yeah. And that, that was like a big deal in Sopranos when Johnny Sack took his, um his deal was the allocution. Yeah, and that's yeah. like the whole thing is never admit to the existence of, our thing that's why you know it was a big deal john Gotti never wanted anybody to take plea deals because even taking a plea deal was admitting that there was something some existence of that life so he was totally against anybody well, that's taking what, plea that's deals. related to the john jr thing and it's kind of separate but related danny marine right because he, he went to his father right and asked him yeah he yeah and uh so when danny marino took a plea deal he paid like five million dollars he did a few years not many uh and he allocated which at his level doesn't happen but some people yeah. believe it was a 302s from juniors that prompted him to do so gerald chargell was his lawyer who was obviously yeah. the previous mob lawyer for other 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 guys i think even a john jr lawyer and he's since yeah. passed but just my research and people that i spoke to people felt danny marino may have allocated and took a, a favorable deal for him partially because of uh the john jr thing to give a little better context uh, and Danny Reno was tripped up with like seven other guys. And like one of the guys was driving like Russian strippers to the mobbed up strip clubs. And there was like a sex trafficking component, right? Not Danny Marino, but the one guy that was in on it. What do they call you guys? A ham sandwich or whatever it is. So they kind of put the yeah. charges down on everybody. And, and Danny had nothing to do with it as well as it was a little bit of an embarrassment for kind of the made guys that were in on that. And uh, the truth yeah. of the matter is, some believe some believe that Junior's testimony may have contributed to uh, his elocution. It's, it's quite possible. Let's see. What's that the saying that they can indict a ham sandwich? I, I don't. I didn't even know when I got indicted. 
I never knew. Like, it was like a long time before that actually happened. And then I was talking to my lawyer one day and I'm like, I'm not even indicted yet, am I? And he's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, you did, did I miss that email? I, did, I didn't even know. He's like, it's not a big deal. He's like, you were going to get indicted anyway. He's like, it's not a big deal. Like, I was expecting that. You were. Easy, to, easy to say. Yeah. The guy who's not been indicted. Yeah. You, you were expecting that. I wasn't. <laughs> I guess, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, the more I've kind of learned and, and researched the legal system, it, you know, it is not a shocking thing. I mean, if they don't, even if they don't indict you, you can still be charged. Like, and I, I know that's rare. It's pretty much saying they have no case, but like when you get, when your stuff goes in front of the grand jury, like I wasn't allowed to be there. My lawyer's not allowed to be there. You just hear the state side of it. It's really an unfair screwed up policy situation of how that whole thing happens anyway. So if they hear everything from the state side and still choose not to indict you, then that's really saying that you you really got no case here, but they can still choose to go forward with it. They want. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and listen to you say that the justice system is unfair. Oh yes, you will. (laughs) I mean, that's, I've never even heard that. (laughs) So, but Hey, listen, um, it's, it, uh, Let's like, let's wrap this up. We need some. We need guests for remote. We need guests. I need guests. Matt Cox needs. Yeah, guests. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the well. Give me 48 hours, and I, you will have plenty of guests. All right. Cool. Cool. Definitely. I'm not at that level of doing four a week. I would. I would. I can never. Cut. I'm doing four a month, and at best. But you guys have full time jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. Listen, my Patreon is starting to pay off. I'm not Patreon. What am I saying? Patreon's not paying off. Um, uh, um, TikTok. Yeah. Wow. TikTok. Like we're making money on TikTok. That's in sh- shock. How many followers do you have? Uh, in the I've, we've gotten twenty thousand more followers in the last probably two weeks. Nice. Well, wait, no, it was it was like thirty eight thousand. Like for some reason, mine hasn't jumped up. Like it's probably. Like other people you see, they're like, oh, it's been six months and they've got 180,000 followers. Yeah. I got 52,000 followers, but it was at like 30, 36 about two weeks ago. But like I said, we've had several videos that have just gotten like, you know, 5.7 million, you know, 3.2 million, yeah. 1.7 million. Like, so it, for like three, four months, it wasn't doing anything. Yeah. Every video we're putting, and we're putting up a video a day. It's getting 800. Wow. 1100, yeah. 700. It was like, Jesus, that went on for months. Then it slowly was at like 2,200, 4,000. Yeah. Listen, and then within like a month, so that went on for three or four months. Then in the last yeah. two, last three months, it has just been through the, not, not all of them, but for me, I mean, it's like, it was a dramatic change. Yeah. Now, are you doing videos? under a minute because i think that was you that told me TikTok is now pushing stuff over a minute. over a minute so all of ours now is like a minute and a half two minutes that's three what minutes. i did on the last because i took a break for a little bit from the shorts between doing all the thumbnails and everything i just i didn't have fucking time i was tired but when i'd done a lot of the clips from gene's second episode i clipped out 60 second ones for youtube and then like a minute 20 to two to three minutes for TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. Right. So it's doubled my workload still, but I went to that just to try to give a little bit more, you know, on there since that's what they're kind of asking. So, so right. quick, quick TikTok story. So my daughter, she's now three. When she was about mm, eight months old, my wife set up a TikTok, which is kind of a mommy and me type account. She did this little thing that do, 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 do. This is a little like stupid thing with music and like touching her belly, getting her smile. And it got 15 million views. My daughter has 103,000 followers on her account. My wife got weirded out and made it private and stopped posting because people were claiming that was our daughter. People were like saying some really weird, random shit. Like when you have that many views, like there was like uh, duets with like, that's my daughter. And like it got, kind of weird so my wife pulled the account and it's 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 there but it's private with 103,000 followers 
I'll be somebody's daughter with a hundred. I was gonna. I, I just roll that over. I I start like the, the TikTok yeah. I have right now. We were posting on it, and then I had stopped posting on it. And it had like when we started, it had like eleven thousand followers, and we just started posting our the stuff from my channel on it. Like I'd take that hundred and fifteen thousand, start posting your stuff on it. Damn right. Well, I, well I was thinking of maybe taking it over, but then the only thing is, it's like a kid account, so you know, you never know. I do have another account. Right that we should collab on. We'll talk this week. And there's about 94,000 followers. It's more of a media channel. But if you have something related, I could post it. So you can't collab on, on TikTok, but I could post something on mine and then put you at, and then you might get some followers that way. At about 95,000 followers on that account. I'll do it. I'll take all the followers I can get here. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take all right. Well, let's, let's wrap it up. What, what do you guys want to, you guys, I know Wade doesn't want to put this on his show. Oh, if, any, if um, anybody cares, it's New, yeah, the, sure. New Theory Podcast. I'm at 48,000 subs. I want to get to 100. First, I want to get to 50, and then I want to get to 100, and then I want to be cool like Matt and maybe get to 200. And uh, that's my YouTube uh, you know, journey. Goal? Yeah, journey's nice. I'm just trying to hit 10,000. That's that's all I'm trying You're to do. What? What are you at now? I'm You're at eight. There. Point nine, okay. I think it is eight point nine thousand. So I'm not, I'm not far away. I did just hit the um one million view milestone. Nice. I think about two weeks ago, and that's that's not bad, considering I only do one a week. I don't do lives or anything like that. Yeah. And I recently just started doing shorts, like not too long ago. I know that's really helped the views. Well, I but I will say this though, I started off in the mob. Well, for, first I did business, and then I did mob genre for a few years. And uh, I pivoted to back the business. My numbers yeah. dropped like a stone. But I'm doing content that I love. I'm going to get Matt on soon. I'm going to get Wade on soon. And with that, guys, I'm out. I got a 740. And uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, All right. Sub crime and entertainment. Ciao, guys. Hey, you guys. I appreciate you watching. Do me a favor. If you like the video, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell so you get notified of videos just like this. Please share the video. Please leave me a comment in the comment section. I really do appreciate it. And please consider joining my Patreon. See ya.